Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Yeah! Yee-hoo! Hey, everybody. Here we are, Tuesdays with Anal. I'm Mark Norman. I'm Joe List, and we're in Funky Town over here. This, this is, is kooky. Weird. We're, uh, we're, I don't know what you call this, Showbriz Studios, I guess, is the word on the street, uh, or on the wall. Oh, okay, Showbriz. Can you hear us, Showbriz? Oh, all right. All right. I wasn't sure. I wanted to shit on him, but I guess the sound is piped in. Oh, no, don't shit on him yet. We need the studio. All right. We got Alex Brazell. He's letting us, he's a, he's a Tuesday and a comic around town, and he's letting us use his studio because we were in my apartment and lunch stuff, slumming it. I had to kick the lady out. I had to hide my jizz. It was tough. I do love the lunch stuff, though. You liked it over I there? I liked the lunch because I liked the handheld microphone. I like that. that. I like the cu- I got used to the couch. I had my yeah. leg up. Now we got to re. Uh, not gurgitate. What do you re... Recoup? Tard? Re... Silent re, re? Um, No, no, no. You, you reconsider. Re, uh, reacclimate. Ac- reacclimate. Reacclimate. Oh, reacclimate. Woo! Hot dog. We got it. Yeah. There it is. We got to reacclimate, and it's a different thing, because this is weird, because it's it's Alex's home we're in. Oh, but it's a great home. We're in a home, but it, this feels like a garage. It's like a side thing. We're really trying to make this work. You got to hand it to us. For two cum-guzzling cunts, we're really getting cameras together. We're changing studios. We're on Avenue B. We're trying here. Well, here's the other thing I liked about your place. I like that there's some photos of us. Like this place, mm. we're going to have to bring our own photos and tack them up and take them down. We're going to have to hang up that. posters and we're going to walk like like uh, architects with a bunch of sleeves under us. Right. <laughs> the, the rolled up things. Yeah, with the yeah. wood. A T-square. Mm-hmm. What is a T-square? It helps you draw a line. Ah. You square it on the table and so, you draw it. So what's a compass? A compass is completely different. That's direction. No, there's, oh, the, there's the, the, circle. the circle with the, one, the knife on it. One's for circles and one's for 90-degree angles. I see. I think. 98 degrees. Good band. Evidently, I was saying it's not a Vargas nerve. I had nine texts, three tweets, and a phone call saying oh, it's <laughs> vagina nerve. I don't know. I even know what it is. Vagina nerve? I'd like to hear about that. <laughs> I got that bad. When I get around, when I shake like a leaf. <laughs> but uh, it's a... It's a Vagal, uh, Dr. J. Sute gave me shit. And oh, then Sute. Mrs. Pac Joe gave us some shit. Uh, she's a nurse. Is that right? Or she wants to be a wet nurse. I thought she just was smart. No, she's wet. <laughs> Good lady. The whole Pac Joe family is a bunch of menches. Crystal. Yes, Crystal with a baby. Yeah, Phil. Phil. And then the baby is what? Cosby or Carlin or Pryor? Uh, or it's got to be something like that. CK, I can't Ari. remember. Who knows? Uh, Harvey. I hate Ari. Pete. Might be Pete. Might be Pete. Hopefully not after uh, Pete Holmes. What happened to him? Did he rape? No, I'm just saying. I hope they, uh, they oh, named oh. after, you know, uh, Ari. No, not well, Ari. Not Ari hates him, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't really hate him. They have the same hairline. Hmm. The baby and Ari. All right. Dateline. Well, here we are at the uh, briz, show Briz. But yeah, we're trying to make it work. It feels like we're like showering in a new shower or you're sleeping in a friend's house for the first time. Yeah, reacclimate. Yeah. <laughs> Affleck. You know what I feel like, too? It's also, I, I, I got to be honest, it's a bitch to get to. It's out of nowhere. <laughs> out of the Remember way. that line? I like Alex because he knows all the Seinfeld references. Yeah. But anyways, it's tough to get over here. I, wa- I, I took the... Uh, the two three from therapy, our old studio. Yes. Down to Fourteenth Street, over by our second studio, mm-hmm. and I walked all the way from there to here, why, Studio Three. Why Noel? Well, I wanted to stop and get some food, and uh, I hate Christmas. I see. Noel. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Well, I, uh, I I feel you too. I live on the west side, as you know, and I uh, I got off on the F, and then you got to walk up to six, and then cut over onto the east side. And it is a cum guzzler. The F sucks. I'm spoiled from the N. The N is like a limousine service. Love the, the N the word. The F, the D, the A, it's all 
dark and the lighting it sucks. It is dark. And it's like dirty and there's like spray paint. And what's going on at that 2nd Avenue station? It's oh. hobo town over there. It's heroin chic. And... If you're not a New Yorker, the, the station is 700 miles long. Yes. And there's only two stairwells at the very end. Right. So if you're in the middle of the train, you're oh. waiting 45 minutes for to get on the thing. And then a, sometimes, while you're waiting to get up the stairs, a second train comes and unleashes another 5,000 people. Now you're in line. You're stuck there the rest of the day. Right, right. It's a cunt. All right. But this hey, is two inside. We're here now. Trailer. We're inside. We're baseball. We're <clears> uh, <throat> penetration. Uh, you got a lot of stuff cooking. I got, this is a biggie for me. We got to save yours. All right. This is a save. All right. I got three things. Right around 20 minute mark, I want you to shift into your thing. Because this is, we got to put some time. Yeah. Oh, well, it'll be about a 12 minute or. All right. Well, then eight minutes to plug. And, uh, uh oh, Shelby's also here, by the way. Did we even yeah, mention? Yeah, he's four inches away from us. He's got the tripod and the, and the tri the old tripod, which is a box. Yes. I've got his uh, lip on my knee. Can I just say this? And Shelby, I know you don't want to be a participate in the show. Your hair is looking fly. It's, <laughs> it's quite mean, a quaff. It's hot AF. You look yes. like Elvis Presley. Young Elv. Yes. Oh, young yeah. prepubescent Elvis. Mm -hmm. Elvis if, uh, if some, got hit with something. AIDS? <laughs> you got to feel pretty good when you look in the mirror there, Shelltown. That's a nice hairdo. He's into it. All right. I bet right. he could really eat a muff. There is a mic right there. <laughs> he doesn't like the mic. He's out on the mic. He's toying with the camera, which, hey, we're trying to film for you Jews at home. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, Patreon. I'll just say this, then we got to get to the business. What a time to be a Patreon member. Oh, what a time. There's some classics on there. We put a new queef up. We got some bonus coming out. Think about what they're getting. Right now, They have a, you have a full episode up there. This episode will be up there. That's going to be two full episodes. That's right. A video queef with Tom Dustin and Ooh, a that. new live episode. That's right. Featuring Corinne Fisher, Guys Chris Allen, fucked. and possibly a special guest. We Ooh. don't know. Ooh, we don't know. I'm excited to, to hear. Yeah, well, if he shows up, you'll uh, you'll see his nose first. Got it. He's mm -hmm. got quite a beak. Yep. Ah, it's, uh, ah. We got Dick Nixon on tonight. <laughs> He's <laughs> not, a, not a gook. Well, how weird to meet uh, the most powerful man in the world, and his name is Dick. Like, that was his name. He went by yeah. Dick. Like, well, they show was, letters. It was normal then. I guess so, but even still then, you're like, the fucking president of the United States, his name is Dick. Dick. Yeah, that's true. Hi, the, Dick. Hi, Dick. What's up, Dick? There's no twat, you know? There's no <laughs> lady named twat. Maybe Tammy should be twat. Ah, well, uh, Kurt Metzger had that great joke. Hey, my name's Kathy, but call me cunt. Oh, I don't know that joke. Oh, it's a classic. It was about Dick, how the Dick is a weird name. Oh, I see. Richard is Dick. All right, well, you want to get into something? Should I get into something? Because I got a few things, you got a couple things, and sure. you, got a, you got one for the ages, I feel like. Ages, rock of ages. So, one, I just want to give a shout out to Rip City, Portlandia, Bridgetown. I had to do a uh, what I thought was a corporate. This guy hit me up, and I go, yeah, I'd love to do the gig. He goes, hey, here's some money. We'll fly out to Portland, do this gig, come out, we'll put you up, the whole thing. And I go, great, nice chunk of change. It's a bitch. It's a six-hour flight each way, so you're losing 12 hours in the air, and plus the Uber's there and all that, but... So I get out there, you know, it's a 7 a.m. flight at JFK. God, I hate JFK. 7 a.m.? You don't need to fly that early if you're going west. But that's neither here nor there. But it was the only good ticket. Ah, I got you. And I'm trying to do your thing, which is stay loyal to the Dell. You got to go Dell. Yes, Delta Spirit. So I get out to Portland. I land at like 11 a.m. You know, I got the whole day. I hate myself. I go to Chipotle. Finally, the gig starts at 7. I walk over there. It's a fundraiser mm. for a guy... Who's I don't want to get too anal here, but a guy's brother died, and they have this foundation where they raise money, and uh, other people who's had a loss in the family come by, and they all chum it up. Ah, uh -huh. that sounds nice. It was very nice, and uh, they go, "Thanks so much for filling in." I was like, "Oh, I didn't know I was filling in. Somebody dropped out." Oh, geez. and he's like, "Last year we had Ted Alexandro. A year before that we had Chad Daniels." I'm like, "Wow, I feel honored. This is good company." So they have a couple local Jews on. And it's just free beer and food and chafe. I love a chafing dish. A uh, chafing dish? I, you know, the, the big metal things with the food sitting in it with the, the oh, sterno. I've had a chafing dick, but never a chafing dish. <laughs> dick Nixon. I love a chafe. It just, you can scoop out this wieners and burgers and stuff. It's always a good sign. Michael Chafe. Yes. So, uh, show goes great. 
It's in like a like a mess hall or something. Uh-huh. Picnic tables, the whole thing. The, the openers are fun. Show goes great. Here's a weird one. Right before I go on, the guy goes in, the super nice guy, Chris, and he goes, hey, just want to thank you for doing this. This means a lot. It's like a real personal thing for us. Chad Daniels was here last year. And uh, he was so nice, he wouldn't accept the money. Oh, and I go, that's appalling. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, well, he's he, he, felt, he felt for us, and he didn't take the money. Oh. And I was like, is that right? He's like, yeah, we tried to pay for his, his Ubers and everything. And I was like, ah, I'm, I'm in the middle of, like, sending my Uber. I'm, like, forwarding it to my agent at the moment, you know? Oh, my God, Chad, what are you doing? Wow, well, Chad's a good egg, you know? He's a sweet man. I know, but it's like, uh, what do you call it, when uh, a baseball player, the star player... He's got to get the biggest contract because otherwise he'll fuck all the other players. Uh-huh, you know what right, I mean? Like right. Mike Trout's like, I got to get eight hundred million because if the guy that's half as good, yes, I don't want him. Ma- if I take two million, now he's making three hundred thousand. Everyone's gonna beat him up. We exactly. gotta beat up Chad. Is my point? Well, Chad, you're a dead man. You're dead to me because you killed me. Because now I can't take it. I feel guilty. Oh, that's so I don't know appalling. what to do. I was already about to get my cash for the cabs and everything, cash cab, and I was like, God damn it, fuck. So I was like, yeah, yeah. So I just ate it. What? I ate the money. Oh. I suck. I didn't know what to do. Chad <laughs> ate it. I had to eat it. That's horrible. You're killing me, Daniels. You fucked me. You suck. You suck, Daniels. You're, you're, a, you're, you're a bad guy. You're too good of a piece of shit. You fucked me right up the pooper. Oh, that's hurtful. I mean, yeah. we gotta, I think we should get them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You deserve to die. <laughs> yeah. Well, then we'll do a benefit, and we won't give you the money. How about that? Yeah. We'll give it to some kid. <laughs> it's good for the goose. It's good for the gander. I don't know what that means. Yeah. All right. So Hockey. So I, <laughs> I go, all right. So I just I have a fun set, and then I'm getting... The, the open micers show up, and I, I tweeted and talked about the, the set on this show, and a bunch of Tuesdays show up. The open micers show up at the fundraiser? Yeah, because wow. they want to see a comic. Why don't they fork over a few bucks to this dead guy? It'd be nice. <laughs> well, they actually bought some beer, so I guess they did. Does he get the beer money, too? He gets beer money. He gets the beer money and the comic money? This guy's cleaning up. This is appalling. He's making more dead than alive. I know. It's the best thing that ever happened to him. I'm dead in the water. <laughs> so... The bunch of Tuesdays show up, and it's so funny. Every Tuesday in Portland looks like Big J. It's all these wacky hairdos and chain wallets and jean shorts oh. and hoodies. Jeez. They're good eggs. They're all, all good right. eggs. And they came out, and it's funny because all his people are like preppy, kind of well-to-do, nice folk. Uh-huh. And then you've got the Tuesdays in the corner. It looked like the major league, you know, where the kid's got his feet up and he's smoking, you know, in the in the stands. Rookie of the year? No, no, not Oh, kid, the Naked Gun. Naked Gun. Uh-huh. Sorry, Naked yes. Gun. Yeah. Don't touch. Sorry. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, we had our Tuesdays, and we got a Chipotle card, and they're all going, praise Allah, and everybody's like, what is going on? What is going on with this ragamuffin riffraff group over here? It looked like the uh, the the greasers. I like the riffraff. The searchers. I do, too. Wait, yes. what's the one? That, what's the Coppola? The Outsiders. Outsiders. Is that Cope? That's Cope. Wow. It's like later Cope. He hasn't made a good film in about 27 years, to be honest. By the way, that is a hot... If you're a gay guy or a, a horny bitch, that's a good group of men right there. The Coppola's? No, no, the Outsiders. Oh, it's see. fucking Tom Cruise, Matt Dillon. Swayze. Um, Swayze? Mm-hmm. How hot is Swayze? Yeah. Macchio, uh, Ricky Schroeder, if you want the cute one. They should saying. be the Insiders, as in inside your asshole, gays. Or vagina. If you're not gay. Yeah. Assuming everyone's listening as a man, but we have a few women. Oh, no, we got some whores. Yeah, at least 25%, I would say. I think so. Call in, write in, ladies. Let us know you're out there. Mm-hmm. So uh, the open micers and all that, they go, hey, it's Saturday night. You should do this show, too. I go, sure. What am I doing? Maybe that'll pay. Yeah, exactly. So I end up doing four shows. <laughs> I'm just jumping around, Ubering all over Portland. Had a great time, riffing it up, doing jokes. All There's a great scene over there. A bunch of bar shows, Becky and some other guy at the Upper Lip. I did a show there. It was great. And uh, they all tried to pay me. And because of the Chad Daniels, I couldn't accept it. Oh, my God. I didn't take anybody's money. This is crazy. But doesn't it feel kind of cool when they go, hey, here's 20? You go, ah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. It feels I'm, good. I'm but, Chad, you, you you killed me there, Chad. You're too nice. Great comic. Check out his, uh, what's the newest album called? He's on Amazon. It's really funny. I what's watched it some called? of it. Damn it. Yeah, what's I was there called? when he shot. He shot it in Denver. Big it's Al. called... Dad. Oh, yeah. Father Chad, of the year. Dad Daniels. D- Dad, Dad Chan- Daniels. Yes, yes, I got it. Good pull. Good pull. There's also Thick Noon. It's uh, a really different great. guy. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So that was Portland. Ran around. Ended up staying out to like 
7 in the morning, had a 9 a.m. flight. I hated myself. I took, I stole some Dramamine from the uh, airport and uh, just conked out. But you never get the good shut eye. No, no good shut out. I haven't had a good shut out in months. I'm yeah. all fucked up. And then my gal is uh, unemployed. Ooh, really? When that happened? Two months. Wow. Two months. So Mine she's. Too. Really? Well, she's a comic. Uh huh. No job. Right. No, nah, not a comic over here. So uh, she is like a, a lap dog. Like when I show up, she's her ass is wagging, and she's like, "What are we doing?" I'm like, "Oh, all I want to do is fucking crash." Uh-huh. But you know, I got no wag over here. Oh, I'm I'm big wag. I got a hello, but no wag. I'm a wag the dog. Yeah, it's a uh, scallywag. Wag the pussy. Wag the dick. Nixon. I don't know. <laughs> Chafing dick. So uh, yeah, so that was that was that. So I'm back in New York on Sunday, and we we do the whole fucking town. And I did a bunch of shows, but uh, I'm saving. All right, saving all my love for me. Last well, yesterday, great day in the park, by the mm. way. Nice Memorial Day setup, hang and uh, beautiful. It's nice when it all comes together because this started six weeks ago. Right. I said, hey, why don't we get a little group together for Memorial Day and uh, not mention the troops at all? We should have done a tribute or something, you know, where we yeah. sat and said a prayer or cut our dicks off. Or... We had a moment of silence. We should on Bin Laden at one point. Nah, I don't remember that. I don't I like know if you, you were in the bathroom. All right. I never went to the bathroom. I felt good about that. How the hell? Did you didn't go to the bathroom? Well, I wasn't drinking anything. I did. I got no I got no uh, vices left. I got no Coke. I got no water. I got no tea. No water? Well, water we just didn't have. Uh-huh. But the line was like 45 minutes. People were like, I'm going to the bathroom. They'd come back, and I thought they were... They left. Right. Oh, like I got your a, lady was gone for a day and a half. A day and a half. It was the most break I got. But I got a, I got a fucking uh, bathroom story for you. Oh, really? Well, the bathroom line was so long, and the women's bathroom line gets even crazier because they all, you know, dab their, their labia and whatnot, they got, uh, whatever they're doing in there, taking out tampons, and I don't know. So the male bathroom, the men's room, had three urinals and a stall uh-huh. so the ladies just started using the stall they made their own little sub line really sideline if you will so everybody every guy is in line going why are these girls next to us what's going on but you know you just guys just go with it you go all right whatever I, no guys don't get credit for how go with it they are mm. just saying so uh eventually we're all talking to the gals, like small talking, and we're just pissing next to women pissing. Weird. Like, there's just a stall wall, and then us just like, uh, and then they wash their hands, and you're pissing, and she's washing her hands. It was crooked. And you're both using your genitals. Complete genital use. Now, I, w- I can't piss if there's a man in the room. If there's a woman in the room. Forget it. If my could, dick would be inside my ball bag. Yeah, stage fright, you'd be ruined. Yeah. So eventually, this one guy runs up, and he goes, I got a shit. Like, this is uh-huh. an emergency. And the girls are like, well, you know, get in line, fatty. And he's like, it's a men's room. Get out of here. And he's like, I got to shit. I got to shit right now. And they were like, you cannot shit. He goes, I'm shitting. I'm shitting next. Yeah, we're next. We get priority. You well, can use the shitter, but we're, it's our shitter. But here's where it gets wacky. The ladies start going, oh, of course, use your male privilege. And he's like, oh. what are you kidding? You're using our bathroom. How is the male? What are you talking about? I got a shit. It's oh. a stall in the men's room. Where am I supposed to go? That's and it became insane. a fucking civil rights war. Oh, my God. It was wild. But that's kind of a, uh, what a microcosm yes. for the whole anal. Shit Nixon. Yes. Shitty dick. Ooh, I've had that. Oh, I got it now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me how. Uh, well, anyways, yeah. it was a great hang. We got a good park hang. Ari dressed as Waldo, which was weird. And um, No, he was like a 20s... Uh... I know, but he was Waldo. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. looked very Waldo-y. He had a cane. Had a cane, which... Does Waldo have a cane or not have a cane? I believe he has a cane. I think he's got a cane. Which nobody addressed. Was he, was he a polio? What's going on? I don't know. He's traveling a lot for a guy with polio. That's a good point. He's I mean, a tough guy. <laughs> well, anyways, good group, great group. Played some Frisbee football. No real story, I guess, but it was sunny. For perfect weather, you put together a good hang. We had a ton of fruit and noshes. Yeah, it was really nice. I had a cheese wedge. It was great. But earlier in the day, so Sarah and I, we live in Astoria. We're heading into the park, and I got a nice big blanket under my arm, and she's got a satchel full of fruit and uh, a sheet, and uh, we, we tried to set it up nice. And we're walking. I'm wearing uh, blue shorts, and uh, admittedly, I'm wearing a Liz Warren T-shirt and some black <laughs> socks, a pair of New Balance. They're pink. Yep. I'm wearing a Red Sox hat. Yep. And Sarah's wearing, you know, uh, you know, a green jacket type of thing and a rock and roll shirt, pair of shorts. I mean, she's 49 years old, for God's sake. Sure. 41, 38. 
Ah, shit. We'll yeah. cut this out in post. She's 28. 28. She looks terrible. But we're walking up the street. We're adults, is my yes, point. We're yes. walking up the street, and some guy with a floppy hat and a salmon T-shirt. Floppy hat? Yeah, like the full brim. Like he's going fishing. Like it should have lures in it. Oh, wow. Like the dad and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the neighbor dad that's kind of a jerk. A little grumpier old men. Yeah. I hear you. He's walking by, and he just goes like this. Fucking hipsters. No precedent. No precedent. Just said fucking hipsters, and I'm hurt because I'm not a hipster. No. I got I got the same jeans I've had since eighth grade. I live in Queens. I like sports and yeah, uh, yeah. You, you say know. you say slurs and fuck. A lot of slurs. Uh, you know, we, you know how we are. We let it fly. Yes. And, um, let the epithets fly. I got bad vision, but I'm over here in a socks hat. I don't shampoo. My jeans are regular jeans. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you. You're an alcoholic. You're uh, thank you. Gay. You got Her- herpes. Herpes. Yeah. That's exactly. not very hip. No, not hip. And Sarah, you know, she's she's whatever. She's a regular lady. Yeah, big lady. I mean, we're into rock and roll. We listen to music. I'm a film nut, but uh, I was hurt. But then I tried to get a little thing going. I turned around. No turnaround, this guy. So he's mm. a big bitch. And I wanted to go, you're a fucking loser. You're by yourself on Memorial Day. You got a floppy hat and a salmon shirt. No friends. You're just jealous. Uh-huh. And uh, I've been in this neighborhood for 13 years. It's not like I just swung in. Yeah, where's he? How long has he been there? So I gave him a turn. I go, are you talking to us? I was like, we're not hipsters. I gave him a little business. Good. And he didn't even turn. Ah, didn't even give me a turn. You got him. He's a bitch. You got him, fatty. And I got to tell you, I got some anger issues. I wouldn't mind tuning this guy up. All right. Fucking him up a little bit. Let's cook some salmon. I'll show you the hipster. I'll put my fucking foot in your asshole. How about that? Go back to Connecticut, you fucking prep. Yeah. And fuck you, hipsters. I do like the hipster. I like records. I have a record player. I listen I, to records. I like them too. They're nice people, but yeah, they're a little judgy. I'm eating well now too. Uh, you know, he might have you. So maybe I'm a hipster. Oh boy, what can you do? Yeah, well, salmon's a bad luck either way. Yeah, the guy's a fucking loser. I got accosted, but it was the second day in a row I was accosted. Aha, uh-huh, Bob Acosta. Oh, we got to remember to read an ad. We got a big ad this week. Oh, big ad. Yeah, I think you're gonna like it too, folks. Ooh, um, it's a new one, right? I'll grab it in a minute. But so, I think it's a new. There might even be two. I don't know what the hell's going There's on. There's two, but one's for next week. Oh, I see. Well, let me nice. pull this puppy up. Thank you, Shelby. There we Appreciate are. It. See all the video. You really uh, see behind the anal here. Oh, God. I got a missed call from my manager and my agent. That's nerve wracking. Yeah, that sounds it. like something. You can't going open on. your phone. It's bad news. That seems like something bad. Well, we got a Roman. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love Roman. All right. Well, let me tell this, and then Hendrick. we'll get into the Roman. All right. Well, so I'm in um, Syracuse, as you know, and I got a couple of Syracuse stories. So I go to Syracuse. Wow, that's rare. And uh, Sunday morning, they're playing a film called Hespro, Hespro or something. It's about a, a, a I was Hasbro, a, the the toy company. No, no, no. It was H E S Bra Hesbra. All right. It's about a priest. I almost said, what was the word? I almost said, fuck. I almost said like the opposite of a priest. Pedophile? No, that's not that's the opposite. Same thing. That's same uh, Devil worshiper, Satanist. No, I almost said... Atheist. Punk. punk. It was a P word. I confused my P words. Pussy. Penis. Prick. Pink. Pillow. Puke. That's a funny word. <laughs> All right. What do you got? Well, I, whatever. Pugnacious pimp. Pimp is what I was going to say. Pimp! I was going to say pimp, but I meant to say priest. So I went to see a documentary about a priest. His name is Ted... Hesbro, he was president of Notre Dame for 30 mm. years. I like to check the Fandangos because I'm a hipster. I like to know what's going on. And then I saw this documentary. I watched the trail. It looked inspiring. I need some inspiration. You know, sure. I get stressed and anxious and gay and whatever. Mm-hmm. So I go, it's 11.05 a.m. I say, I'm going to go to this movie. So I went and had breakfast with Steve uh, Big Dick Rogers and oh, Caitlin yeah. uh, Regular Vagina Palufo. All right, Palufo. And I uh, had a nice breakfast. I got a breakfast story I'll get into in a moment. All right. I'm going to Tarantino this up, a which breakfast. is a tease. To my breakfast store. Ah, break fast. A lot going on here. All right, where? It's Syracuse. Syracuse. Funny bone. So, yeah, so we have breakfast. I say, I'm going to go sh- see this movie real quick. It's 11.05. We can meet back up at 1. I assume you guys don't want to come because you're not hipsters. I'm uh-huh. going to watch a documentary about a priest. Yeah. So I go to an 11.05 showing of a film about a priest. I walk in. It's three elderly couples all sitting every other row in the same central area. Got it. Look the- adorable. Okay. I assume they're old Catholics that want to see this thing about their hero priest. Sure. And then me, I'm just curious and gay. So I sit in the back row. I like to be in the back. 
And we're watching the movie, but 40 minutes into the movie, I hear a ruckus mm. on, the, on the side like where you come in. Mm -hmm. And I get nervous because it is about a priest, and a lot of people don't like the priests because they have sex with children. Sure, I've heard that. So some people are upset about that for whatever reason. Yeah, it seems fun. And the door swings open, and you just hear like, what the fuck, that shit, motherfucker? Yeah. And three kids come in, teenagers. Jews? I don't want to describe them, but uh, they come in, and they're yelling. They're, they're saying the N-word a right. good amount. And they're allowed to. And they're, no one's upset about that part. Well, I'm upset. We're all upset. Got but, it. Got it. Uh, they go on, what the fuck? And then they, they just burst in. So they've clearly snuck into the theater and they've run in and they're hiding out mm -hmm. in the priest movie. And they walk in, they go, let's sit down. And they sit down in the same row as me, but in the corner. Mm -hmm. And they're going, this is some old ass movie. This is some racist ass white movie. Now, ironically, mm -hmm. this guy, Hesbro, is a huge civil rights act uh -huh. activist. He's at the, uh, he marched with. MLK, and they were friends, and he was like the head of the Civil Rights uh, Committee uh -huh. for the White House for Dick, Dick Nixon. Chafing Dick. So he's like this huge civil rights hero. So they come in, they're like, this movie smells like hot dogs. Y'all smell like fucking hot dogs. Mm. And they go, this is the old white people. There's a lot of slurs and yeah. yelling, and the old lady's like, hey, shut up. He's like, you shut up, motherfucker. You shut the fuck up. And it's tense Jesus in here. Jesus Christ. Now I'm looking around, and it's three couples in their late 90s yeah. and me. So I was like, I guess I got to do something. My heart is like pounding. Wow. And you don't expect this because it's 1130 in the morning. It's a of priest course. documentary. Who? What were they thinking? What, what did they, you think they got in the wrong theater or what? I think they're rabble rousers. I think they went to the mall. They probably got dropped at the mall. I'm uh -huh. sure they're inner city youth. It's an unfortunate city. Yeah, it's the worst city in America, if you ask me. It really is. So they probably got dropped in the mall, or they took a shuttle, and then they just snuck into the movie. Maybe they're waiting to go see whatever, Little Big Top or whatever the big Soul movie plane, is. Soul Plane, I don't know. Something. And uh, so they just ran into this theater. So they're just rabble rousers. Sure. They're, they're wilding. Ah, uh, yes, wilding out. Yes. Uh, they weren't out. They were in uh -huh. the theater. And so I said, all right, I better go do something. Right. And it's against, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious as fuck. I'm terrified. So I get up, and as soon as I get up, they're like, you going to snitch? You fucking snitch, bitch, motherfucker. Wow. And, uh, the, you know, the N-word, the whole thing. And so I'm nervous, but I'm like, I got to just go do this. Thing. I got to get I gotta get him out of here. What are we yeah. going to do? Just lose? We're all going to leave? Right. We're going to watch a movie with three people yelling at us? Exactly. So I'm walking. So you know how in the movie theater, you got to walk down the steps, and then you got to do a U-turn to walk down back down yes, the hallway to yes. get back out. So as I'm doing my U-turn... They come running down the oh, steps. Oh, shit. It's and getting so serious. Now I go, all right, I'm going to be in a situation here. And I'm just so scared. I, I just want to run. What do you think? 15, 18, 12, hard, 9? Hard to see because the theater and they were both dark. Sure. Um, but, you, I mean, if, whatever complexion. It's very dark in a theater. The movie's going. So totally. The way they're behaving, I would say they're 15 or 16, maybe. I mean, they were tall enough. Pubic hair. Couldn't really see the pubes. All right. But uh, I would say mid t They weren't 12. They Got were older it. than 12, and All they are probably right. younger than 20. Got it. So they're running down after me. So now I'm like, oh, boy, this is the situation. Now my heart is, like, pounding through my chest because it's that it's literal fight, flight, freeze. Yeah, I'm like, right. I'm going to fight or I'm going to run away. But I'm like, I'm not going to run. For a moment, I thought about being like, Woo, that's a shit movie. Where are we off to, guys? Like, join them, you know? Yeah, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, so I'm walking, and then I'm walking up the hallway, and I'm just slowly walking with my head over, because I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm just going to do the best I can. I'll just throw as many fists as I can, probably two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out they ran across the hall into another theater uh. instead of coming after me. That, that's what also made me think. These are like young whippersnappers. Oh, yeah. So I went out, I told Secure, I said, you got some rabble rousers running around here. Oh yeah, whipper, please. Then I go back into the theater, and this is right when they introduce MLK and like this hero. And ah, I wondered if they stayed long enough, would they have gotten into yes, it? But yes. I feel like they probably, well, at one point he yelled Harriet Tubman, which didn't even make sense. Weird. It was like a white lady. Yeah. He's like, Harriet Tubman. And they were like laughing. I was like, this doesn't even make sense. They stunk Oof. at heckling. Yeah, they were all off on their historical references. So I felt a little hero. I walked back in and the six fat the couples were like, all right, son. Hey. And I wanted to be like, I kicked their asses, but really they're just hiding in the other theater ruining that movie. Right, right. Jeez, I feel bad for the kids seeing, you know, pets too. Yeah. So uh, then... The security people come in like 20 minutes later with flashlights, and they're looking, because they must have thought they were in this theater mm -hmm. still. And I thought maybe one of the old ladies texted or something. Yeah. And so I came down, I took the point again. I was like, hey, they went across the hall. They're over there. And they're like, all right, we'll find him. And it was like yeah. a security guy with like oh, a good. little like nerdy vest. Yeah. 
So that was the end of that. But boy, I, I felt proud. Good for you. You stood up. I was very nervous, very scared. But I was like, ah, if I get beat up, I'll get beat up. But uh, I'll put up a fight here. It sounds, the weird thing is they had to buy a ticket to get in. You know? No, no, it's I think a, they snuck in. That's uh, why they ran in. They probably just burst past the gate. Because when I went in, it's literally 11 in the morning. It's like one fat, pimply girl. Like, right. T- tickets was like, probably was like, get out. Wow. But I, sh- uh, I shouldn't say this. Ah, you well, keep going. Well, it's a tricky thing, though, because, you know, there's all this stuff about white people calling the cops on black people and stuff. And it's like, oh, they're just they're unarmed and they're teenagers and yada, right, yada. Right. That's the kind of the, that part of the news story. But I mean, I didn't call the cops or anything, but you're like, well, what are we supposed to do in this situation? Because mm-hmm. they're unarmed and they're just teenagers they're and they're teens. living unfortunate lives. And I'm sure their parents are shitty and they're whatever. They're growing up in this horrible city. But I'm like, we bought tickets to go see a film. <laughs> yeah. And there's three kids screaming the N-word at us and threatening us in the screen. What are we supposed to do? What's the situation? Yeah, it's Do tough. we leave? We all just leave? We go right, home? Right, right. Well, I was a rabble rouser douche when I was a kid, and we got the cops called, at least security, all the time. Right. We had the uh, the rent-a-cops called on us a lot. I guess the difference is what happens after that. The shootings. They get beaten or shot, and you right. get you know, brought home. I remember we have, on one of our podcasts... Our pal, uh, one of the best episodes ever, spacing on his name, New Orleans. John Patton. No, no, the little guy. He's hilarious. Uh, oh, Scotland. Scotland Green. Yes. One of the best episodes ever. He Great came on, but he told the story about it. he was driving drunk and the wheels came off his car and he was oh, drinking yeah. whiskey and the cop drove him home and was like, all right, you behave. And I was right. like, Jesus, that's crazy. That's New Orleans. Though. But it goes both ways. Yeah, sometimes the whitey gets beat up. Sometimes the whitey gets off. Sometimes the black guy gets beat up. Sometimes the black guy gets off. Yeah. And that's a good porn. Well, it's wild. But uh, it was a wild situation, but I felt good for it. But then the rest of the movie, I was just like watching it. And I'm like, my heart's pounding. And every time an explosion happened in the theater next door, it would make a noise. I was like, uh, they're back with guns. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, proud of myself. And well, that brings us to this week's ad. We got a new one. It's a hot one. Take it there, Mark. Oh, yeah. Dave.com. Not paying attention to your bank balance. Who does? I don't want to see that thing. I take stuff out of the ATM. I don't look back. I just get the hell out of there. I don't know what I'm working with. Then you get overdrafted. That's what happens. I've been screwed many a time. <clears throat> So, you know that sting you feel every time you pay an overdraft fee? The I worst. Do. Let me pour some salt in the wounds. Big banks make 33 billion bucks off the overdraft fees they oh, charge us each year. Those that's ridiculous. Fat cats. <laughs> yeah. That's What's what the Dave app doing? That's the Dave app is here to stop that. The Dave app is putting an end to overdraft fees for good. Finally. Jesus. Dave is the number one budgeting app in America. Because it saves you overdraft fees, tells you about upcoming bills, and you can advance, you get an advance of 75 clams. That's nice. From your next paycheck with no credit check and no interest. The Dave app is just $1 per month. That's $12 per year, which is way less than an overdraft fee. You got that right. And you'll never pay one again. Wow, this is a great idea. That's great. Mark Cuban is an investor in Dave because he got crushed by overdraft fees in his 20s and wants to never pay an overdraft fee again. So right now, folks, do this. Go to dave.com slash Tuesdays. That's plural. It really helps the show if you let them know you heard them from here. Mm -hmm. Help our show out. Go there. Download Dave and never pay another overdraft fee again. It's immediate savings. Go now. Dave.com slash Tuesdays. Spelled just like it sounds. Dave. D-A-V-E. Dave.com slash Tuesdays, plural. And you can help us out and you can help yourself out by going to Dave.com right now. Yes. Don't get overdrafted again, folks. Mazel. All right. Sorry, uh, Shelby. Thanks for editing for us. We love you. God bless you. I will suck your dick for... Free if you download Dave.com. What do you say to that? Yes, and now that we have the cameras, we can tape it. Shelby is uh, nodding. Cat got his tongue. <laughs> nodding is pretty good from the shelb. Nodding Hill. Oh, let me, all right, let me bang up my quick breakfast Oh, yeah, thing, bang me. And then I want you to ship this home. Well, I got, I got a couple home. of jizzes. I know where you can tinkle and tease and then... All right. How's your uh, esophageal? It's okay. It's a struggle. It's up and down. I'm going right. to therapy. I had this is what the problem was. The doctor was like, "You can have a cookie." And then I went to Wegmans has the best cookies in America. Ah, Unbelievable. If anyone here is traveling to a show from upstate New York. Oh York, yeah. That that that's the gem of of Syracuse. People talk about the basketball team. Don't say, "Fuck you. It's Wegmans. Weg the dog." Those cookies are something else. Oh yeah. It's a beautiful store. 
So I ate two cookies. My doctor's like, you can have a cookie. And I ate two huge Wegmans late at night. And then yesterday I was just dying. I'm all ah, fucked up. But you fat bitch. I'm back to a pound of veggies. Anyways, speaking of eating. Uh, By the way, I saw you at the, the park. You're shredded. Well, I stopped eating. Yeah, well, you got that Holocaust ribby hot like uh, Abby thing going. Thank you. Abby Dear Feldman. Abby. <laughs> <laughs> um, who I think listens. Ah. I believe. She's cute. Yeah, she's sweet as hot pie. Three foot eight. I can't tell, but um, the lady I got herpes from was about 4'2". I heard that. Yeah, I remember she was like a couple inches off from being officially a little person. Wow. And she is a little person. Isn't that weird? There's little yeah. people, and then there's little people. Good point. Like, Gary Vee is a little person, but he's not a little person. Right, right. And you even say it the same. It's not even a different enunciation. Right. It's not like a little person. Well, there's also person of color who could just be a tan... Jew. You're a person of color. I'm a person of color. You're colorful. Is Asian colored? That's a person of color. Wow. Yellow. So then aren't there more people of color than not at that point? If you got Asian, you got Hispanic, you got black, you got Indian. uh, The Asians alone, I think, outnumber the rest. So yeah. There's a lot, a lot of Asians. We're a minority. You You got that right. You heard it here first. Well, I think that's a fun idea I might have that little people, instead of being called little people, they're called little people. That way we can disguise. That way we can I like def- it. differentiate. Yeah. I'm you know with what you. I mean? Like uh, Gary Veed is a little person. Nick Novicki is a little person. <laughs> Something. Well, can people do the, uh, the ooh? Well, if you can't do it, then you can't address little people. All right. I guess it's dwarf for you. Yeah. It's uh, Freud. Not, not Freud. Who's the other guy? Barrett. Who's the one? Obama? You, you die. <laughs> Freud. Who? Not what? Freud. Uh, Darwin. 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 Wow, big diff. Darwin, you lose. Yeah, the uh, what? Uh, he's got the uh, the Darwin effect. What do you call that? Darwin is survival of the fittest. Yes. Which they they changed a lot. Evolution. Yeah, that was someone else. That was Sophocles. Oh, all right. That's what I have in my throat. Yes. Uh, but anyway, so I'll I'll tell this quick, and then you land this ship. I think it was freshman then Sophocles, and then junior, the freshman of. Stuff. Uh, All right. Jeez. Oh, we ran out of anal there. Okay, Griffey Jr. <laughs> Who's your favorite junior all time? Ooh, maybe not the movie, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That was a I don't even like garbage. Junior Mints, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't find them all that refreshing. I'm, I'm with you. I don't like chocolate and mint. Nah, it's not that. I can't have either now. I'd, wow, my head will explode. Yeah, you'll shit yourself. All right. Let's focus. Sorry, right, Junior. Um, so. La- they moved the hotel at the Syracuse Funny Boat. Now you're at A Loft, which is like a trying to be a hip hotel yeah, in a trying. shitty city. It's all it's like all IKEA in there. It's shit. Yeah, it's this neon. There's like a record player you can borrow. Uh, it's very silly. Uh, fucking hipsters. And the old hotel across the way, the Embassy Suites, is a beauty. I love an embassy. And they got a gigantic free breakfast. So I say to these two cunts, I say, let's go over and get the gigantic free breakfast. Oh, oh these are the big dick and the normal vagina. Yeah. Okay. So we get in the car, we drive over for breakfast. Breakfast, and we sneak in because I got an Aloft cup. I'm blowing our cover. Mm-hmm. I got the Aloft coffee cup like an asshole. I throw that in the bushes. We jump in there. We eat a nice free breakfast, even though we're not staying there. Oh, I was going to say, good for you. It was very exciting. And That's it's a, lunch. It's a buffet. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and uh, it's me and old Big Dick Rogers, and he goes, oh, that guy over there is an actor. And I look over. It's Frank Whaley. The actor? Who's one of my... Uh, Jerry Lewis? He was one of my favorite actors ever. Frank Whaley. Frank Whaley. He Is plays he in the Whalers. He plays Brett in Pulp Fiction. Brett. B- Brett. Because of the metric system. Brett. Oh, look, look at, at the, the big, big brain, brain on Brett. I thought it was Brad. It's Brett. Oh, okay. Uh, so he plays him, and he plays Archie Graham in Field of Dreams, oh. and he's in an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Wow. He plays a nut in the drive-thru. Yes, yes. And then he also plays Lee Harvey Oswald in JFK. He's in three of the greatest movies of all time. What's he doing in the queues? And my, well, he hasn't worked. He's, this all came out in 1988. That's a good point. But now he's in the TV thing, so I recognize him right away. And uh, he doesn't look like he used to, because he's 20 years old, baby face and those. Yeah. Now he's a little aged. Is he uh, he's, pudgy? He's 55. He's not pudgy. He's thinner than he's a rail. Oh, he's starving. He looks like he's doing Schindler's List too soon. Oh, boy. Which I'm looking forward to, Tarantino. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> he's, he's from Syracuse originally. He's with his family. And I'm like freaking out, because, you know, Pulp Fiction, Field of Dreams is the movie I've seen the most in my life. Probably really? 125 times. 
And Pulp Fiction, I've probably seen 75 I times. I love Pulp. And JFK, I've seen 40 times. So I'm sure. just obsessed with this guy. And then, of course, Curb. Forget about it. Oh, yeah. Forget Curb. Yeah, it's a big influence, if you hadn't noticed. Same. So uh, so is he back into the left? Well, he's over there. And uh, I go, I got I to gotta say something. Now, they're egging me on. They're like, you got to go over there. This well, is a big moment in your it life. It is breakfast. You got to have eggs. They're scrambled egging me on. And I go, all right, you're right, you're right. I'm getting fired up. I go, I got to sell. Because when am I going to meet Frank Whaley? Yeah, I got your opener. If you make the omelet, they will come. Oh, that's not bad. All that's right. not bad. That's I will something. come. Yes, we'll all for come. you. <laughs> I don't know. So what'd you say, Fatty? So I walk over there, and he's at the egg thing, and I go to the, the potato thing right next to him. He's scooping, I'm scooping, and I turn, and I went, and he made dead eye contact oh, with me. Oh, wow. And I, he just alphaed me. I was bred. I couldn't do anything. I just turned away. Oh, you can, you can hang out with wildin' teens? You can't talk to Whaley? I just looked away, and I just, I folded. I was ah. like, look at the small dick on Joe. Damn it. So then it, I, he goes back, and I go, all right, all right, all right, I got to regroup. So I go back to the booth, and Steve's laughing, and I'm like, all right, I got to get it together. I'm splashing oatmeal on my face. I'm like, all right, I got to get back in there. Yeah. But he's with his family, so I kind of look over, and then when I look over, he is looking at me. Oh. Second eye contact. Maybe he knows you. That's what they said. Ah. I'm, I'm not buying it. He's a gay, maybe. He's um, a twos. Oh, Possibly. Jesus Christ, my manager's texting Turn me. Turn the phone terrible. down. There you go. All right. Well, I had it over there. Shelby gave it to me. Now I'm scared. We read the wrong ad. We got the ad down. The phone's gay. Keep it going with Whaley. All right. So now I go, now he's recognizing me a second time. And I'm getting nervous because I hang out with Louie a lot. Uh-huh. And a lot of times people come up and they go, excuse me, Mr. CK, I'm gay and I don't know. Right, he's like, right. get the fuck out of here. We're trying to eat dinner. Yes. So I don't want to be that guy. No, you don't. So then he gets up another time. He goes over to the coffee. I go, I'm going back in. I try to be like a soldier. I was like, I'm getting in there. I'm fucking him in the ass. So I walk over there again, and I'm right behind him, and he just turns and leaves before I go, ah, ah right before I can say anything. Shit. And then I don't want to be a hack. I don't want to go, excuse me, Archie Graham. And then he's right, like, ah, oh, Jesus, right. with another one of these boners. And also, what are you going to do if he goes, yeah, that's me? You're going to go get a photo? You're going to hug him? You're going to grab his ass? What are you going to do? Exactly. And then, But then, they're in my other ear going, no one knows who this guy is. I looked him up on Instagram. He's got 1,200 followers. No one knows who really. Jesus. Whaley. So he might have been like, you know who I am? you got to be shitting me, that's Archie true. Graham. Yeah, look at the big brain on Joe. So, right, right. You got anything to wash that down with? I'm wrestling. I'm going back and forth. Big Kahuna Burger, JFK. Yes. You know, so I'm, I'm flipping out. Then he goes back. I go back again to the booth. Now it's the third time. Then he gets up. He goes to the bathroom. Mm. Wait, no. First, Steve Rogers goes to the bathroom. Okay. Then Whaley goes. And Ooh. now I'm jealous. I'm like, now they're going to bump into each other. And he's going to see his big dick. Steve's yeah, he's going to be blowing his big dick if he can get his mouth around it. Big dick on Steve. So now I'm like, Steve's in there making friends. They're going to get married. Fuck me hard. So then Steve comes out, and I go, he's still in there. All right, he's been in there for a while. I'm going to go in. I'll time it, because then we're going to be isolated. It'll uh-huh. be him and I. Isis. I go in there. I'm like, Frank Whaley's in the bathroom. I get my shit together. I kind of straighten my tie. Yes. I walk in, and <laughs> I just hear... <laughs> Not just that, I also hear... Oh. Whaley's taking a Whaley. I mean... Oh, man. And that, he's, that'll turn you off of an actor quick. And he's been there for seven. Seven oh, minutes. Whaley. Oh, Whaley. Well, he's got to do a, a, a break. Take time. This is, we need a cut. <laughs> it's, Regroup. It's crazy. And I'm the whole time I'm pissing, I'm just cringing, looking at him like, what the hell is going on in there? Like, I'm a, forget meeting him. I gotta help this guy. Wow, do I look like a bitch? I what? Mean, Say what again? He's really, st- I mean, I'm not even putting on, what's the word? What do you put on? Airs. Airs. What does that mean? Brendan Air. Air know. Bud? Air Jordan? Ugh. Well, anyways, I'm not putting on Air Jordans or anything. I'm yeah. not wearing any shoes. And uh, I just hear him go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy's fucking dying in there. Wow. I'm so fucking I, dying here. So Not in I, that movie. I, so I come out and uh, I go, boy, that's great. They go, did you talk to him? I go, no, I think he's shitting a fucking leg in there. Yeah. And then we hang out for another 10 minutes. He never reappears. Whoa. I think Frank Willie's dead in there. Wow. I mean, we left before he ever came out. So Jeez. I don't know what happened. Well, maybe that's why his film career went through the toilet. It might be like Moonlight Graham. Like, he walked in there and turned old and died. Mm. But whatever it was, I didn't get to meet him, but I'm thinking about sending him a message on Instagram and saying, hey, there's a podcast episode about you. Eh, I don't know if he'd want to hear this one. Probably not. Well, I mean, I admire the hell out of the guy. I love him. I hope he's shitting better. But, yeah, he's uh, a great. He's a little guy, right? He's a little guy, and uh, he looks much thinner than he... I mean, like I said, he was a baby face, but Field of Dreams was literally 30 years ago. Wow. Pulp Fiction, 25. Yeah. And, uh, you know, JFK was 91, so even Curve, that was probably 10 years ago. So he's kind of peaked. 
Well, yeah, but he's doing a lot of TV shows. I guess uh, All he, right. he's, he works. The guy, he's never stopped working. He's a terrific actor. I always have fantasies of being the next Tarantino, and I bring back careers. I'm like, I would love to make that guy something. Yeah, yeah, he did that with a couple of people, like Reservoir Dogs. Had that old guy. Remember that weird guy? Barely had any lines. The mustache. Joe Tierney? No, 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 no. There was another guy. He was like on the team. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, He was yeah, like an yeah. old Western actor. Yes. And, Charlton yeah, Heston or something, something like that. Something like that. But uh, he was fucking homeless, basically. All right, now let's get to the real juice. All right. So, Take it over, Mark. So now I'm back in New York. You know, it's Sunday night, and I got four, I got five sets in the city. Now, this is a holiday night, baby, holiday pay, you know, because it's the night before Memorial. Mm -hmm. So first it's Gotham, then it's New York Comedy Club East, then New York Comedy Club Not So East, then Cellar, then like a Fat Black or something. Okay. So Gotham is first. Chris Allen. Yeah. So uh, Andrew at Gotham goes, hey, your spot is 825. It's eight now. Are you close? And I go... What do you mean close? I got 25 minutes before I'm on. He yeah, goes, we were together at this point. Were we? At the stand with Tom Dustin. That's right. Yes. So I go, ah, shit, I, uh, I, uh, shit, I'm not close at all, but I, I'll jump in a cab. He goes, jump in a cab. We, we need you. And I go, oh, shit, all right. So I jump in a cab, which, you know, you never do. And I get there at like 8.15. Okay. So I'm 10 minutes early, which is a lot for us. I like to just slide right in. Yeah, yeah. So I show up and he greets me at the door and he goes, hey, Seinfeld's on. You got to follow him. And I'm like, all right, all right. You know, you do what you got to do. It's never a great set. They get up, they piss, they check their phone, they take a photo. You know, th there's a calamity after a, a star goes on. But not a brutal follow. Not a brutal follow. Because it's Seinfeld. Yeah, and it, this is a uh, event for Morgan Stanley. Oh, boy. So, so they, you got to give him the money back. Yeah, so they asked to be a little clean. You know, they're like, yeah, it's a corporate thing. Don't do this, don't do that. Just keep it somewhat clean. Like, yeah, no problem. So, now, so I, can I just interrupt please, for a moment? Please, please, please what interrupt. Kind of, what kind of downplaying? We're going, all right, Seinfeld's there, but still, this is Jerry Seinfeld. That's true. The whole, this whole show, we're just ripping off Seinfeld. That's yes, the whole thing. That's it. The whole show, the premise of this show is we'll do Seinfeld, but we'll say cunt and fag and cum. Right, yeah. I mean, this guy has shaped our entire lives. We've referenced the show 11 times in this episode. Per every episode, there's a reference. That'd be a fun game to have someone go through and find every it'll, Seinfeld. It'll reference. happen. It'll happen. And, uh, and off our regular lives, probably what? 15 times a day, average. Easy. Easy, Easy. peasy, Japanese. Yes. So this Easy, isn't just big some... fella. There's one right there. <laughs> so this isn't just some schmuck. Yeah. This is Jerry Seinfeld. Of course. Now, He's the king. We're around, we've been around, so we're not so blown away or shocked right, these days. Right, right. We've seen, I've followed Rock, I've followed Chappelle, I've followed uh, Romano, I've followed, uh, you know, a pedophile, but... This is Seinfeld. Peach. He's he's on a Gotham, uh, and I just I'm in my head where I'm kind of like, damn, I want to work on some new, but this is you know you got to kind of bring the heat. Like mm -hmm. so, I'm kind of just getting my head in the game. So I'm not annoyed, but I'm still like, all right, just change of plans here. Like we're gonna shift gears. Right. And so he comes off, and as a goof, he's coming off stage. I'm walking on, and as a goof, I go, you still got it. Okay. My classic line, and he goes. Oh, I'm a fan. What? And I go, what? A fan? I'm a fan? What are you? And I go, you must have the wrong guy. And he's like, and I'm kind of walking away from him, going to the stage. He's like, no, no, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I go, oh, my God. My heart is pounding through my chest. I can't believe it. You got to be kidding me. I could not believe it, Jerry. I'm busting. I'm busting. So I go on stage, and I'm, I'm glowing. I'm gleaming from this whole uh, little interaction just now that I just, I'm in the zone, baby. I'm zinging. I'm zanging. I'm riffing. I'm raffing. Killing. Killing. Killed, Jerry. Killed. Ovaltine. <laughs> Three references since we started. I know. So I just have a good end, and here's the clinker. What, the clinker already? Well, here's a clinker. This is one clinker, folks. First clink. Lots of clinks. Mordecai. Mordecai? All right. He's a Jew. Tenenbaums. So uh, I have to be kind of clean. Uh -huh. Which I normally would go into my pedophilia chunk. I'd go to my school shooting, whatnots, my anals and my Jews, whatever. But I kind of keep it a little clean. Uh. A clean clink. Yes, clean clink. So I get off stage and I go, well, that was fun. I felt good. You know, I felt like a good, you know, some packed Gotham, hot set. I walk off. Donnelly's coming on. He goes, hey, good set. I go, right, thanks, thanks. And I go, all right, now to get to my other set. How great is that? I had an interaction with Jerry Seinfeld, one of my comedic heroes and a guy who I've watched for fucking years sure and he comes out of the shadows 
I didn't know he was there. He's he never in the hangs. shadows. He was in the shadows. Wow. And he goes, that was great. Let's go talk. What? Come on. I can't. I'm uh, not shitting. Not take, shitting. Take out your dick and come on my back, for God's sakes. You got it, baby. Right between the shoulder blades. Oh, that's where I always put it. So I go, oh, my God. I'm shitting. My, I, I'm floating on air, baby. Yeah. I'm, I'm floating through, and we go through that little hallway, and we go down the stairs. We go to that downstairs green room. Yes. It's just me, him, and Mazzilli is kind of coming in and out right, a little. Right. He's the owner. But he's so good. He's so respectful. Mazzilli knows how much it means to be in that room with Seinfeld. He knows. So he'll peek in to make sure you're not throwing eggs at him or whatever. Yes. And he's doing the whole, like, oh, we love Mark. He's one of our guys. He oh. headlined here. He's doing all that. He's, he's, he's laying it on thick. What he's, a great guy. He's a mensch. He's a fucking mensch. First class. Mensch. Yes. Mazzilli. Yes, first class. Mint. Would love to be at the club more. Yeah, me too. So uh, I'm just sitting there on the couch with Jerry, he's where Shelby is, much more talented, and we're just yucking it up. Shelby's got better hair. Yeah, possibly. And lips. So we're just going back and forth. The first 10 minutes, I'm shitting myself. I'm just like, this is so surreal, I can't believe it. You hear his voice, I go, I've heard that voice. My That voice is imprinted in my brain. Now, do you have this? Because I've had this. This is what I have going on. When I've been in situations Please. like this. I got the voice in my brain going, I got to call Joe. I got to email my dad. I got to text my mom. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm going through. As you say, I'm not yes. even listening. Because I'm yes. like, I got to call everyone I've ever met. I'm in the fuck, I'm, I'm in the green room totally. rubbing feet with totally. Seinfeld. I had that, but I, I, I tamp it down. I go... Be in this. Be here. Have a real conversation. Let's get into it. Sure. So the first time I'm shitting myself, but I got to tell you, and everybody says it, and I sound like a douche. It just melts away. He's a comic. Right. He's just a comic. Where I'm, I'm killing. I'm getting big laughs out of him. He's uh, He doesn't get out a lot. You can tell. Like, I can tell he doesn't have like a super friendly relationship with a ton of people. Right. So he's like, you could tell he's having a great time. Wow. You know that feeling when you're you're meshing and mashing with a guy? Certainly. You're, you're just hanging, like we do, but we know each other so well. But we had that out of the gate. He's laughing. I was saying this. I was saying that. He's like, I, I just don't want to go home. I'm like, oh, I don't care about anything my girlfriend says. And he's like, ah! He's losing it. Wow. He's taking the hat off. He's wiping his head, you know, putting the hat back on. A head wipe? Head wipe! Wow. Unreal, man. I can't. We went over. We went over Louis, PC, Leno, uh, the state of comedy, the internet, comedians in cars. I mean, Catch a Rising Star. I geeked out on him. He's like, Catch a Rising Star. You, you, you probably don't know about it. I'm like, I don't know about it. I've read your biography. I know everything about you. I have your photo on my wall. He goes, Well, my dad. I go, You mean Cal? He goes, You know my dad's name? I was like, Sorry, sorry. I'm geeking. Yeah. But he appreciated the geek. Cal Signs. Because he's a geek. Right. So, and he keeps grilling me because he's like kind of trying to figure out what my deal is. He's like, so where are you from? In New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans. Oh, 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 how old are you? Oh, 35. Oh, you're right in the right place for 30. You're doing exactly right. He's like, what about Netflix? I'm like, they don't care about me. He's like, they will. They will. And I'm like, well, what about this? He goes, doesn't matter. You know, he just does that thing where he gets on a roll of the same sentence. Uh -huh. I go, what about PC? He goes, doesn't matter. What about these preachy comments? Doesn't matter. He what about does Trump? That. Doesn't matter. I'm like, all right, all right. But it was good stuff, and we, I got a lot of good nuggets out of him. And uh, he was, you could tell my blown awayness was giving him a little energy. Right. You know, going back, and and we were vibing, baby. I mean, an hour and twenty in the in the wow. green room. Wow. Uh, we could have done a podcast. And there were a couple lulls. And I was going, thank you, idiot. It was like I was on a hot date. You know, like, think, keep it going. Come on. You know, don't let him be bored. And we just hit it off. And he had a, we had a great time. And he's like, you know, maybe I'll do the next show. Because he was going to go. He's wow. like, maybe I'll do the next show. I said, I, said, I think I, you know, that young energy, I think got to him a little bit. That's nice. You pumped it in. I pumped it, baby. And uh, so then, here's the clink of Another all clink. This is the big clink. Huge clink. Closing clink. Giant clink. He goes, uh, well, uh, let me get your number. What? Come on. You got to be kidding. Phone? Phone. No, phone no, no, no. You wanted my height? Well, I thought maybe the waist. I see. So uh, I had a 30-inch waist. So uh, he goes, let me get the number. I go, what, are you kidding me? And he's like, yeah, let's get the number. And I go, all right, I'll, we'll never use this. He goes, use it. What? Just classic. Use it. Oh, you know, that, my that God. Voice. I mean, I don't want to say too much what we talk about because out of respect for him. But, man, did we just have a ball in there. I got the number. I'm I'm uh I'm 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 jizzing. I, I can't even imagine. You know, we walk upstairs. I go, who do you like? You know, because I'm trying to get more out of him. I don't want it to end. Right, We're right. Walking back up the stairs, he's gonna go on. And he goes, you know who I like? And he turns around very serious. He goes, Bernie Mac. Oh, I go, wow. Bernie Mac. Really? He goes, oh yeah. And he starts doing this little soliloquy about 
His face matches his voice, which matches his act, which matches his persona, his outfit. It all works. You want to be a vessel. You want to be a comedy vessel. And I was like, Rodney had that. He's like, yes, yes. Wow. And you can tell he was like, thank God you get it. Right. You know, he's like, I'm nerding out and you understand what I'm saying. So we're now we're back on the stairs talking, you know? Oh, stair talk. And he's like, how, how are you doing with your act? I go, ah, I do too many comparisons. And he goes, ah! I do too many lists, and we just go back, and now we're talking about comics, baby. Too many so, lists? Sounds like a family party. Hey-ho! So, uh, yeah, we just had a great time. I missed two sets wow. throughout this conversation, but, I mean, how could I How could I not? You yeah, know? you gotta. What am I gonna Hey, sorry, Jer. I gotta go to New York Comedy Club. Can't do it. So, I'm skipping. I'm like George after the, the hand model. I'm, like, walking down the street, skipping. I'm twisting. I'm doing the whole thing, cartwheels. And uh, I go straight to New York Comedy Club and apologize in person. Wow. Because I was just so like, look, I get it. I fucked up. But because uh, I had like 80 missed calls. I'm like, look, I get it. I fucked up. But I told him why. And Amy Hawthorne, to her credit, was like, I get it. You, I get it. You know, don't she feel bad. She gets it. She gets it. I Literally love all got these it. clubs. They all get it. They get it. I think they get it. Yesterday, I canceled the stand spot because I was like, it's game one of the Stanley Cup finals. And he's like, I don't I enjoy. <laughs> really? Well, Patrick's a hockey guy. Ah. That's why there's one booker that's so frustrating. Yeah, yeah. You get a, a K it's a or lot. no response. Right, right. Everyone else, they're like, well, Seinfeld, you got to hang with Seinfeld. Right. It's hockey, you got to watch hockey. I get it. Why not be nice? Yeah, it's nice to be nice to the nice. All right. So a couple more clinks and I'll get out of your hair. Give me a couple of side clinks. So, you know, I just, I, I go back to the cellar. I have a late cellar and a late uh, fat black. And I go and I see like John Fish and Lenny Marcus and Ray Ellen and Liz and Will Vince. All Jews, most of them. Well, by the time I started saying it, it was Jews. I get it. You slipped into Liz. Yeah, and a Will. A Will. Yeah. Will converted. Oh, Sammy Davis. So Why? I was just telling them the whole fucking thing and they're like, wow, that's crazy. And you know what? The seller, they'll, they'll, they'll shit on things, uh-huh. you know? But there was no shitting because that's uh-huh. how big this was. Huge! I'm jizzing. I, yeah. They can feel it coming out of me. And I go do a set, and the set was fun. And I, it's one of those things. And I hate to be this guy, but all the flights, all the heckles, all the bar gigs, all the fucking Amtrak's, all the buses melted away. Melted away. Of course. After that's one of these moments of like, holy shit! The what? What if he didn't decide to show up that night? What if I wasn't at Gotham? What if I was on later? I mean, it all connected. It's all pipes. Pipes, Jerry. Different I'll, pipes go to different things. I'll call a plumber right now. There well, it's you funny go. that you say that because I was saying the same thing to Steve and uh, Caitlin about Frank Whaley on kind of a comedic level, but this uh-huh. is more like real. But of all the things I'm like, I, I was talking about, I watched the movie Field of Dreams so many times. It was, so I was seven years old all the way up until recently. Yeah. I've watched for 30 years. I've been watching this film. This guy, this one guy, he made all these decisions in, in his life that led him to this to be in this film. Right. And then I saw the film. It means so much to me. Pulp Fiction. All of our lives took place all over. He's been all over the world. And we both came to the same yes, breakfast yes. place at Embassy Suites in Syracuse at the same time. And we're like, there's that guy. Yes. That I've been watching since I was seven. Bananas. And this happened with you, with Jerry Seinfeld, who means so much more than Frank Whaley. It's just a funny person name to remember. But yeah. Seinfeld has shaped our entire lives. Entire life. That and now voice. you're sitting on a couch with him. Yes. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's not so great when you think about comedy. We're both comedians. We're both doing clubs. We both live in New York. But it's like that thing in Comedian where he meets Cosby. He's like, I can't believe life is that long. Right. Where I can sit in my, apart- or my Long Island home listening to a record, and now I'm talking to you at the Beacon or wherever the hell they were. And so, he's a serial rapist. That's true. So maybe Jerry will turn Seinfeld. into a big rapist. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. So we That just, would be a clinker. So, you know, I go home. I tell the girl we're going nuts. She's a big fan of his. We're banging. We do anal. It's all crazy. And then the next day I wake up, and I'm like, all right, we go do this. We get lunch, whatever. And uh, I get a text. Uh-oh. The sign. What? It's the sign. He Come texts on. me. It, my phone lit up and said Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, my God. Is that not insanity? Surreal. I hope you screenshot it. I did. I uh, sent it to you. Oh, my God. Yeah. Come in a cup and throw it in my face and make me eat it. Please. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll do a whole uh, bit about it. Patreon. Yes. Yeah, so uh, now he, I don't want to say what he texted me, but it was about a bit he tried. Wow. And I jokingly go, I got a tag for you. Like trying to pretend like I was an idiot. Like I'll give you a tag. You're right, Jerry, right. You know? 
And he goes, what's the tag? Wow. And I was like, oh, my God. So now I got to come up with a fucking tag. Oh, Jesus. So now I'm sitting in my apartment. I, I kick her out. I fucking turn the lights on. And I put my, uh, my glasses on. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm in the lab now. I got to figure out a tag. And uh, I, I come up with something. It's not great. So uh, I sent it to him, and he goes, oh, it's funny, thanks. Like, wow. I blew it. I blew All it. Right. Was there more? No, yes. Sorry. So I go, uh, but watch out, don't step on Carlin's bit, because mm. he had a similar premise. And he goes, I just want to show him I know a lot about comedy. So he goes, what's his? I sent him a YouTube link. And he goes, wow. oh, wow, good to know. And then he goes, what do you think of this thing? And he sent me a YouTube link. Of what? Carlin. Now we're breaking down comedy. Oh my god! We're doing god. theory. Now we're doing Carlin versus Pryor. Who's better? And they, I said Carlin. He said Pryor. We're fighting over that. We're, we're having a discussion. Oh my! It's you, Jerry and Carlin. Yes, exactly. So I don't want to get too into it, but I, at one point, I, it, it's getting so long, like these long, long wow. texts, just about comedy theory. And I go, "Hey, man, maybe we should just go to a diner and just and hash it out." He goes. Let's do it. What? So we're going to go to a diner. Oh, my God. At some God. point. Put I don't know when. in my ass. Yes. Anything you find, put it right in my ass. You got it. <laughs> All right. Looks like we got a uh, tripod here. Ooh. But yeah. Which leg do you want? But hey, so that's the big nug, baby. Wow. When's the diner? I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm terrified. I almost don't want it to happen. Because I could blow it. It's like getting past at the cellar. Now all you do is check your... Oh, speaking of which, I didn't get any spots this week. Ah, sorry. Ah, fuck me. See, it just happened to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Wait, what happened? I didn't get any spots. Oh, I see. That's like, once you get past the cellar, you're all so excited to work oh, at the cellar. Okay. And then every Tuesday, you're like, it's 5.30, it's 5.45. Right, and you start right. texting everybody. It, it feels like you asked, I asked a hot girl out. She happened to say yes. And I'm like, I don't want to go out with you. I'll just blow it. I just wanted you to be able to, to go out with you. You just wanted to jerk off to the yes, screenshot. Yes, which I did. Been there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm in this uh, weird area of my life right now, and I... <laughs> It's like, I can't even describe it. I, I forget about it, and I'll be shitting. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. No, it's crazy. It's and crazy. The biggest of the big. The big. The biggest. Maybe yes. Larry David, maybe. That would maybe, be something, but maybe. still. Even even still. Yeah. The show's not named after him. Good point. But, Good you know. To meet you. Larry, I feel like, would be a lot scarier in person. Mm. He seems a little more curmudgeon -y and grumpy, whereas Sign, he was... You hear all these horror stories. He's, he said this, he says that, he's cutting, he does that. Couldn't have been nicer, couldn't have been sweeter, couldn't have been cooler, laid back, just regular dude. So, but exactly, you hear horror stories. That's why I think the difference between him and Larry. Sarah, Sarah, there's a lot of stories of like, Jesus. Right. Yeah. But. Larry, that, there's none. Ah, interesting. Yeah, well, that, I didn't see any. I was waiting. I was like, here it comes. But if he likes it. You know what Hamilton was saying? Hamilton's excited that you're talking to Seinfeld because now he has someone to talk to about talking to Seinfeld. Wait, to him? He was saying that yesterday. Aha. Uh -huh. He's like, now I can talk to somebody because no one talks to Seinfeld. Oh, right. So Hamilton's out on this thing. He's like, I got to go to a movie. I'm on a carousel. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. But now he's got you. So now you and Hamilton will get close because of the Seinfeld. Yeah. Well, I saw Hamilton the other day. I almost tackled the guy because we have a thing now. That's what I'm saying. And I, That's what I was, he was saying. I was like, how about this? How about that? He's like, it's so funny because every time I saw him before that, I would go, what's up with Jerry? How's yeah, Jerry doing? And he was like, I love that he met you because you're the guy who's obsessed with him. So it all worked out. Why would Jerry bring anything? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, the whole thing's kooky, and uh, I can I can quit now. I mean, I shouldn't, but it's one of those things where I feel like this is the most validation. Our special tonight show, you know, my mom's gay. The whole thing. This is the one. This is it, Jer. It's big, big, big. So it's all this downhill is the show, from here, and we're not changing it. You got stairs in an apartment. I'm freaking. I mean, that's probably, we probably made 50 references. All right, we got to start to wrap it up. Oh, here. really? I mean, it's we've been at oh, hour geez, five. Oh, sorry, here. sorry. I thought minutes. we were going to the nine. My oh, fault. We're probably editing out about 12 of these minutes, so. Yeah, yeah, good point. What can you do? Well, Where folks, you at there, buddy? <clears throat> third, no, fuck me. I don't even know what day it is. Oh, um, I got to find my Tuesday. book. I think I left it over there. Ah, oh, suck is me it? sideways. It. Don't worry, it's somewhere. I'm at Gotham Comedy Club July, what is it? July 12th and 13th. What's that Friday? Oh, you're headlining Goth. Yeah, well, we've known this for a few weeks. Speak but of the whatever. Dev. July 12th and 13th, Gotham Comedy Club. Oh, June 28th, 27th, 28th, 29th, Providence Comedy Connection, East Providence, Rhode Island. Please, for the love of God, I can't sell tickets anywhere. You got to let me sell tickets in New England, for the love of Pete. Uh, and Thanksgiving weekend, I'm in uh, Boston, Laugh Boston, which is a long way off, but Laugh Boston, Thanksgiving weekend, make plans. Providence Comedy Connection, June 27, 28, 29, and Gotham Comedy Club, July 12th and 13th. I also am doing the Fat Black Pussycat on July, I mean, on June 11th and June 18th. 
and June 20th. So I got a few shows in the city, a lot of shows in the city. If you want to come out to those, check them out. And uh, Nick Griffin has a new special out on Amazon this Ooh, week. Go yes. find that. Go listen to Nick Griffin. He's amazing. One of the best ever. One of the best. Kyle. Big fan. Love Nick. And get on the Patreon. For God's sakes, we got a whole video of this episode. It's going to be on video for Patreon only for a couple weeks. And then we got uh, the live episode will be out soon with uh, Corinne Fisher, which we're recording tonight. Yes. Chris Allen. Uh, they might even be out by the time you hear this. And uh, we got another bonus, video bonus with Tom Dustin. It's a great time to be on the Patreon. Please sign up. We want to blow up that fucking Patreon. You're getting a ton of shit for three bucks. I know. A lot of footage. A lot of good stuff. A lot of quality stuff. These these live apps are going nowhere but Patreon. Yes, exactly. You're the only eyes on it. Uh, I'm going to be at uh, Bananas in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. All you Jersey gooks, you always ask where I'm going to be there, and that's it. Uh, then I'm going to be at the D.C. Draft House. Love that club. Love that town. Let's sell that one out, shall we? Then we got a Helium Comedy Club in Buffalo, New York. Not Syracuse. Love Buff. And then uh, Woo Ha Ha in Worcester, Mass. And uh, Helium Comedy Club in Indianapolis. Indy. 500. Comedy Works in Denver. One of the best clubs out there. Lunch. Punchline, Sacramento. I hear they're fighting to keep the uh, San Fran one open. Oh, yikes. And then uh, Improv in Addison, Dallas, Texas. Improv, Addison. You got it. Dallas, Texas, Tejas. And then uh, Magoobies, Baltimore, Spokane, and Tacoma. And uh, Roar Comedy Club in Springfield. Oh, I just got a new offer coming in from my agent. Cap City Comedy Club in October. That's for you, Austin. All right. Let's do it. So, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope Jerry never hears this because he'll probably defriend me. No, I love it. What, are you kidding? I don't know. I think I gushed too much. I might have said too much about what we talked about. He's probably like, hey, this is private. No, you didn't say anything. Ah, you said comedy. Prior. I read the text. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. I hope you're right. I'm ner- I'm ner- I can't. I'm living in fear now. It's That's like the irony. It's not like you said uh, Jerry hates George Garland. You're saying, you know. No, no, out. not at all. He's a fan. Of course. Yes, he was at the funeral. All right, so uh, thanks, guys. We love you. Praise Allah. We'll see you in hell. Kiss your dad and punch your mom in the cooter. Tits. Ah!